A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That's why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This uh, conversation captured in the gospel here between Peter and Jesus is really a commentary on that fifth beatitude. Remember when Jesus said in Matthew 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Mercy goes against our fallen human nature, right? The tendency of our wounded heart naturally we tend to play favorites, right? Or hold grudges, resent insults, demand our rights, you know? Yet Jesus says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you, right? We tend to care much more about kind of our own hopes and dreams and and even problems than those of others. And when we do take an interest in other people, it's usually because we like them or they can help us or... They're kind of on our same level, not so much because we view them as children of God, equal to us in dignity and deserving of the same love, respect, and mercy as ourselves. And again, this is perfectly natural. But as Christians, we are called to be supernatural, to rise above what nature would naturally lead us to, right? We don't operate on merely a natural level. Because if we do, we always run into that natural limit of our ability to forgive, right? And if, especially those who offend us and harm us, right? Jesus is telling us today that as Christians, which is a name we use often as Christians, which means to be Christ-like, To be like him, to behave like him, means to be limitless in our forgiveness. To be merciful, what does he say? As God is merciful. Or as the psalm says today, which was so beautifully sung, no, slow to anger, abounding, like overflowing in this steadfast love. And we're so grateful that God is gentle and patient with us, you know, always willing to forgive, always showering us with blessings like this beautiful weather we've been having the last two days, uh, always there when we need him, always ready to understand us when we turn to him, always ready to sympathize with us before judging us. 
we're just so glad when we turn to God and find that mercy always, right? And then when he allows a cross, especially big ones, we ask, oh my golly, how could this be? How could you? Why are you doing this to me, right? Why do you permit this? Or when someone else fails us the same, and again, naturally, it's understandable. We always want people, especially, and God, to show us mercy, compassion, understanding, because if they knew what we know inside, well, they would understand, right? Yet, when other people require our mercy, we're usually not as quick, right, to show mercy. Yet being merciful is the key to attracting and enjoying God's mercy. Less indeed are the mercy, for showing mercy is the way to attract God's mercy. So being merciful as God is merciful means learning to see others more as God sees them and less as we would perhaps be tempted to see them. An example perhaps you know and that I've used once before at least in one of my homilies was this example of during the genocide that took place in Rwanda in 94, right? Remember that almost 800,000 people were killed between the warring tribes of the Tutsis and the Hutu and many of those by machete, you know, brutally. Among the survivors was a young college student, Emakule, Ligabisa, no? who, when the rioting and murderers began, she and seven other women took refuge in a tiny bathroom inside the local Protestant pastor's house. And they didn't leave that bathroom for 91 days. And at one point, as Emakule describes in her book, Left to Tell, she could only hear the murders going on outside the bathroom window. She even heard, sadly, the wailing of a baby that had been left, perhaps having lost her mother, or, and all they could listen to for, unfortunately, several days on as was the baby crying until it became fainter and fainter. So during those 91 days of terror, she survived because she prayed. She prayed all the time, most especially the rosary. At one point, she was praying to God about the men who were committing the atrocities, and she was so full of anger that she felt hatred entering into her heart. And she knew also that she wanted and should forgive them, but she couldn't find the strength, and she complained to God in her prayer, why is he letting all this happen? And then in a moment of grace, she writes, our Lord sent her a thought that changed everything. God allowed her to see the young men engaged in this genocide were also his children, just as much as she was. And in that moment, her anger dissipated and she actually began to feel compassion for them because they were so horribly blinded by their sin and were incurring the wrath of God eventually on their sinfulness. And later when the genocide was over and she was trying to return back to her normal life, she came face to face with the men who had murdered her mother and her brother. Her first words to them were, I forgive you. Christians strive to be merciful because God is merciful not because men are merciful. There's no limit to God's love because he sees all of us, all of his children. And he sees each of his children, either in their sin or in their virtue, with the same love. And in fact, as parents do, when they see a fallen child, a difficult child, a child that perhaps is now an adult and making poor decisions, and we'll see them with more concern, more love, more mercy. So with practice, we can easily forgive little offenses all the time, right, every day. But it's harder when those are big things, right? And sooner or later, all of us will experience some of those big things. Right? In fact, you may even be thinking now, or any time the theme of forgiveness comes up, that one big thing that's so difficult to forgive. Sooner or later, each of us will have to forgive a major offense. 
uh, maybe even one that, that really affects us and our life very deeply or those that we love very deeply. And we can even run into situations where we ourselves have committed a sin that offended deeply and gravely somebody else. And we can have trouble forgiving ourselves, even if we know in our heads and our minds that God or perhaps even someone else has forgiven us. In these cases, it's much harder to follow Christ's command of limitless mercy, but not impossible. And perhaps when Peter was asking Jesus about this question, Lord, if he sins against me, how often must I forgive? Who knows what Peter's offense was that, that was in his mind that drove him to go to Jesus to ask what limit he needed to have to be a follower of Jesus. But it's important to remember, even as difficult as it is, and sometimes as a priest when you're giving this advice to others and you hear the story, it's even difficult to remind them, even though you know it's saving truth, this message of forgiveness, humanly speaking, sometimes it's hard to advise it to someone. Because after you hear the story, you're just as enraged as they may be against the injustice, right? But it remains true nonetheless, even if sometimes it doesn't feel as true. Forgiveness is a decision of our will, which is the heart of our dignity as we freely choose things, and that's the highest thing we can do as human beings, use our will. It's a decision to let go that desire of revenge and release, especially towards an offender. Perhaps it seems like some readers of the, the New York Times were reading Sunday's Gospel because in today's uh, New York Times there was a book review, or just actually a few days ago, of the history of forgiveness in literature. And somebody wrote in today responding to that previous article, a rabbi, and he made the distinction. There's a distinction between forgiveness and letting go. And he said, which I didn't necessarily agree with, he said, forgiveness requires that the other person forgive, ask for forgiveness. And if they don't, you can't really forgive them. You can let go of the pain and let go of it, but you can't forgive until they recognize it and ask forgiveness. Yet Jesus, on the cross, said, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. Before anybody asked him forgiveness, he was already forgiven. And God the Father is also that same way, and we're to be merciful as the Father is merciful. So now that decision to forgive takes place at such a deep level of the soul that it can exist at the same time as emotions of anger and resentment that we have to work through. Those emotions don't flow from the will. Like a lot of our decisions that we don't feel like, but we choose because we know it's good for us or for those we love. Those are simply natural reactions, those emotions of anger, or resentment, etc. But our decision, our choice, exists at the very core of who we are. Just like Amakule, that decision to forgive. And even to say those words, I forgive, when maybe you don't always feel them. In other words, it is possible to truly forgive someone and at the same time still be working through feelings of anger, resentment, etc. So when that happens, we have to counteract those feelings like Immaculate did with prayer, with offering it to God, with turning our attention perhaps to more productive things. I'm not going to harbor or dwell on that. And sometimes it takes a long time, that process, for grace to overflow and even begin to permeate our emotions and feelings. So as we continue with this Mass, let's, let's see this Mass, which we're about to continue to celebrate, as the ultimate act of mercy that it is. It's the renewal of the death of Jesus, where he said, do this in memory of me. And what was that this? I often remind us that this was his passion and death and resurrection. And what triggered his passion? offense of his brothers. They attacked him. They killed him. They arrested him. They tortured him. So the this that we're celebrating is Jesus's response to that. His mercy, his forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Take this and eat of it. Take my very life. And in that act of generosity and love and mercy and love for the Father and for you, you'll find 
resurrecting life. In fact, brothers and sisters, that's why we can believe and advise forgiveness and mercy, because it is life-giving, not just to our own hearts, firstly, thanks be to God, but to the offender. It opens up the possibility experiencing mercy can also set them free. Let's renew our faith in God's limitless mercy towards us. Let's renew our belief in his presence in the Eucharist, the body, blood, and soul and divinity of Christ, and beg him with all our hearts for the grace we need to forgive and love others just as he has forgiven and loved us. Amen.